So today we're going to talk about Kami Corps because their heroic journey continues and it seems like we're reaching kind of the crescendo and the upwards trajectory and who knows what's next on this Kami Corps story. Really could go anyway and I wouldn't be surprised. But yes, they uh, actually managed to beat Koi uh, here yesterday. Uh, winning uh, two maps. The first one was actually pretty convincing as well. But we're going to take a look at Haven here. And, uh, well, it didn't start off great for Kamiko. You can see that they're already 3-1 uh, down here. And uh, this round, I think, is just going to show some of the early struggles that Kamiko had. I think this round is a pretty good example of it. Where we're just going to see maybe slight disconnect. So uh, this is a full round by uh, for both teams. And it starts off with this dart towards C. And they managed to sneak Zaysh uh, into kind of the cubby here down towards C. As soon as I saw this and like the breaches towards C, right, you're probably expecting that this will end uh, probably towards C with the IGL on breach over here. But then we get this kind of uh, weird thing here going on with screen where you see how isolated he is, right, uh, compared to the rest of his team. And he's just going to go kind of, you know, running and jump picking and, and trying to take this fight kind of, uh, you know, completely isolated alone. Okay, he doesn't like commit to any fight or anything. So it's not it's not like the end of the world, but we'll see that he's going to end up alone again. And I think that that was a bit of a problem for them in this kind of, you know, early part of the game. But, you know, this next part is perfectly fine. They come and shock the, uh, the, uh, the alarm bot here on B and, and you know, they create some pressure uh, towards mid. The sky flash comes out, sees that Scream is here as well. Now, Starkso has managed to uh, push up here towards A, but then they come and uh, smoke him off and send a drone there, right? And as I said, this is actually going to end up towards C. So, you know, this round is is, is not too bad at this point from Kamiko, right? They've created a bit of pressure towards B. They're now creating a bit of pressure towards A. They've got this control on C, and they're eventually going to come back this way. Like, you know, it's actually not too bad. And Starkso feels very isolated by the drone. So he actually just pops his ult and uh, and has to run away. But that, again, is pretty good here for Calming Core. As uh, now it means that, you know, Koi are going to not have that good information down towards A and what's really going on. Uh, the dog comes out towards B because uh, Koi are looking for some answers here. But now as uh, Calming Core begin to start to, you know, execute their plan, which is to come back towards C and do this. Scream is going to end up kind of all alone, just walking into Garage here. And uh, as we can see, Cold Dementor is here with a judge. But at no point did they ever, you know, take this control. I mean, the, the most they've done towards Garage is Scream jumped across once. And uh, maybe, I guess, because he saw the sky and he maybe can hear the dog here, he thinks, oh, that must be the guy who was here. You know, therefore, it must be uh, kind of free. But as we know... Uh, that is not going to be the case, and Cold Mentor picks up a free kill, and, and somehow XMS from, you know, kind of back here actually manages to trade it <laughs> through the wall, manages to get the wall bank kill. Very nice kill, but we end up in a 4v4, but now obviously without Scream coming and doing, you know, kind of, he, you have no duelist here, you know, this nano swarm completely destroys them, and no one can really run through it, and so, you know, that is kind of creates a bit of a problem. They do get the flash on Wolfen here, but again, like, you know, if we had a dash here, uh, you know, to potentially see where Wolfen is, that would be nice. But instead, Wolfen is just going to mop up and Nevera is going to end up having to save. And so you see, it wasn't necessarily like a terrible round here on the whole from Kami Core, right? Like, they actually were in a decent position and they ended up, you know, kind of moving the pieces around on the board decently well. But then just, it felt like uh, oftentimes Scream was, you know, going in and he was very alone and you know no one was kind of there with him that was kind of i think a symptom of, of what was going on early on in this game and now let's come to round number eight which again is kind of a, a messy round i guess by Kami core koi actually took a timeout when they were like five one up and i, I really don't understand why because i was just thinking Kami core really need a timeout but they'd already used one early on uh so uh <clears throat> And now let's come to round number eight, which again is going to be a very scrappy, messy round, you could say, <laughs> with some mistakes in it. Uh, but Kami Court are going to manage to win it, as we will see here. It's going to start off with uh, our first mistake in just a second, uh, which is that Shin is going to miss his dart. Uh, he's going to actually uh, hit the tree in just a second, as you will see here. Uh, he misses his dart. Um, and so that's kind of the first uh, part of this round, uh, which, you know, maybe was a bit of an omen. But... Okay, they come down and they actually do take this uh, Elon control uh, anyway, right? And they come down here and uh, eventually what's going to happen is Devera has his op, of course. And uh, we've got uh, Trex just jump peeking there and Trex is going to get tagged actually by Nevera, a little wall bank tag. Uh, and so uh, he goes down to half HP, the Sage Wall comes out towards short in response. And uh, well, Carmen Core again decide, 
we want to go and hit C. So again, they've taken this A control, right? They create a bit of pressure down here, and then they come towards C. Now, the dog does come out and re-clears it, so you can see the reaction here by Koi that they very quickly come across, and then the Seekers come out as well, and yep, that tells them they're not towards A at all. Uh, and so in they come for this uh, C hit, and in they go, obviously needing to go somewhat fast, because obviously the rotates are coming in with the Seekers. In goes Scream just there, and uh, well, Scream's going to go hero mode in this round. Again, we get a missed Nano Swarm lineup there from Carmine as well, just a little second mistake, uh, but it's all fine, it's all fine. Then we end up with this kind of uh, interesting situation where because of the Seekers, uh, you know, the rotates are here. So Koya kind of ready to do this like very fast flood retake. And so Nevera TP'd in here, but then got hit by Utility. So he TP'd back. And then these two, uh, you know, are very worried about the flank. And XMS is actually going to come running back here to put a turret there. So uh, again, it, it's messy is, is what it's going to be. Because by all rights here, they should just lose the round on the spot. You know, essentially these two are in a 5v2 uh, for a brief moment. But Scream's just going to go absolute hero mode, as I said. He gets one, he gets two. Uh, and then he manages to live long enough where Nevera is able to get another as well. And so we get into a 2v2. Then we get the Killjoy lockdown coming in. Uh, and we're also going to get a res as well. But as the res is coming in, actually Shados turns his back and Shin is able to get that kill. So we end up back in a 2v2. Then Shin is going to manage to get that kill on Trex as well. Coldementor gets one, but then gets traded by XMS. And Carmine, of course, win the round. So... Yeah, I think we get a, a good sense that it maybe wasn't flawless Valorant that was being played here, uh, but Carmine were able to find enough plays to win rounds. Now let's come to round number 18, and this one I actually did think was a very, very nice round by Carmine on the whole. So they're now on the defensive side, and what we're going to start off with is Nevera again. I mean, he's got to be the best omen up that's ever existed. How he manages to get out of these situations and not die, peeking through his smoke there. Obviously he does have the dart to help him, uh, but just crazy, just crazy stuff. Uh, Koi then actually go for a res, and so we're back into a 5v5, and, uh, Wolfen tucks himself up here by B, and, uh, and in a moment, he's gonna go for a Killjoy lockdown, and they're gonna try and run, like, a bit of a B fake. You know, I don't love Killjoy lockdown fakes in general, because, to me, they, they don't make a ton of sense, but, anyway, Koi actually do get kind of the best case scenario from putting down their lockdown here on B, in, in my opinion, which is getting the defensive Killjoy lockdown in as well. So you see the smoke comes in just here, there goes our Killjoy lockdown, and you see the counter lockdown comes out here from Carmine. Uh, so what we're going to get now is Koi, the whole plan all along, was actually to come in towards A, so that's what they are going to do. And uh, they're going to come and take this site. And they are playing a, a bit of an odd comp here, uh, Koi, because they are playing a raised Sage, which is something we haven't seen in a while. Uh, on this map, uh, but uh, one of the, I think one of the main strengths of Sage on this map is that if you take this A site, Sage is good at kind of holding this, and we actually saw this in the round prior to this, where the Sage basically, you know, can buy just enough time between the wall and the two slows, right, if you can put a wall and two slows in here, it just makes this retake, you know, incredibly hard, but Carmine, coming off the back of the last round, where, you know, they did try and retake from here and didn't have enough time because of the Sage, they instead decide, okay, well, we have to come from heaven instead, right? We have to just flood out of heaven instead. They do manage to break one uh, segment of the wall there, so that does help as well. But you'll see in just a second, I mean, we've already got three players there, and actually, we're going to get a fourth joining them as uh, Shin starts to go up as well. And they don't have great uh, weapons this round either, Carmine. You know, they've only got a, a, the one up, essentially. They've got Scream Knives, and then... Uh, just sheriffs uh, other than that. Um, but you'll see that this retake, in goes the stun there from Zaysh, and they're just going to go in, right? In we go. We managed to get the first one from XMS there. Scream manages to, to get another one with his knives. And, uh, okay, uh, Shados is going to manage to trade uh, two of those kills back, but XMS now picking up that rifle from Hell manages to get another one as well. We've now got Novera kind of coming around this corner also, so he's now kind of getting into position and so you end up with this quite little you know nice setup where you got xms here he's obviously kind of the the main focal point here for koi because he's the one that's been getting the kills but you got zay swinging here you got Navera swinging here right so you got three nice little different angles that they're all now in and uh, they managed to use that to their advantage as they get these kills and yeah, it was a really, really, like, nice retake. And, and what I really liked by Carmine here is they realized, oh, yeah, taking through kind of the normal, you know, kind of way that we would normally go against this Sage probably isn't going to work. So let's just drop three people out of heaven instead. And then finally, it would all come down to round number 24. And, and by the end of this game, some odd things were going on. 
but Carmine would finish strong here, as you will see. We've got Nevera opping here uh, down towards uh, C, and he manages to get that first kill. But Koi have a res, so what do they do? Well, eventually, they will decide to go for that res. But Nevera is ready for it, because as this Sage Wall comes up, and uh, as Shados goes and gets the ult orb, he's going to go for this res. But you, Nevera is uh, well aware of the fact that uh, when you go for a res, the head just comes ahead of the wall, and so Nevera gets that kill. And now Koi are kind of in a, a bit of a weird spot, because there's 1 minute 9 left on the clock. Uh, but they've kind of walled themselves out of C now. <laughs> right, like this wall, obviously now, is just like amazing for the defenders. <laughs> because, you know, it just means that no one's coming this way for the next 40 seconds, as long as it kind of stays up. So... Yeah, this is a bit of a weird situation now for Koi because they kind of have to come up with an idea and they decide to actually just all funnel through Garage, which, I, I, again, because of this wall, I'm not sure is, is necessarily a great idea because, you know, a lot of eyes will be trained on this kind of anyway, right, with this wall up. Uh, and by the time that they go for this hit, is Koi, so of course they're going to wait till the last second anyway. Uh, and so that wall will eventually break, but... You know, all trying to funnel through garage, you know, I think can be pretty tricky. They try and put a smoke over towards A to cre create some doubt, but uh, it doesn't affect Kami because they're basically just playing full retake on A at this point. Uh, feeling confident in their A retake, especially now that the Sage Wall is gone. Not not necessarily a bad idea. We actually get an Omen ult in onto the site here that briefly sees Novera, but he then uh, TPs away. And so here we go. I mean, just a full hit from Garage. The wall finally breaks there. We get a trade of these uh, Omen flashes. Uh, one going back and forth. We get the Raise Nade coming in. But now, I mean, three players from Carmine are already here. And, uh, you know, they basically stayed here the whole round. And so they're able to get these kills. And we see XMS just kind of going back and forth. The Soverall comes in as well. We get a really nice flash uh, from Zaysh there. He get, that gets them a kill. And then it's called them enter in a 1v4. And Zaysh is able to finish it. And Carmine would win the game. And uh, it's just unbelievable how quickly kind of things can change right it just goes to show how quickly things can change and i think the psychological impact uh has kind of been massive as well for this team that you know uh, and from now on they probably will think yeah we can do this <laughs> right and uh, last week they looked like you know just a normal team there wasn't really too much to it and this week as well they showed yeah we're decent enough to actually win a game. So it, I was really happy for them because obviously they've been through kind of a lot and uh, it's good to see them, you know, it's good to see them smiling and celebrating and, you know, having fun playing the game again.